Today from the new Transformers movie, Anthony Ramos is here. <laughs> when I tell you, I took Jeffrey to see this movie because, you know, before uh, the guests come on, if they have a movie, we like to see it beforehand. And it was so good. Oh, my goodness. It was so much action, and I loved it that it's Anthony Ramos. And the other star is Dominique Fishback, yeah. is her name. And she's on that new show, Swarm. Mm -hmm. And it's just so, it's like, I, I felt like I was watching a movie for the culture. It just, you know, <laughs> so many Brooklyn references and things going on in there, and I loved it. <laughs> and I heard, I heard Pete Davidson's voice in there oh. as one of the new, as one of the new um, Transformers. So oh. it was, yes, it was so good. Je Jeffrey was the one to say, he said, is that Pete Davidson? And I said, yeah. So I'm so excited that Anthony Ramos is here to talk about the movie. Uh, plus, Regina DeChico is in my lab lounge. Man, good morning, John. Good morning. Listen, I love when you can make things happen for people. You were guest hosting at The View about a year or so ago, and Regina does warm up at The View. Right. And you came and said, I have somebody for our Laugh Lounge. We got to get her on. And so she's here today. She's here. I'm glad for Regina. Because <laughs> a lot of times you don't get to see who, like, who makes the audience happy and who warms up the yeah. audience. And so I'm glad Regina is here. Um, I have to say, I love when I get to catch up with old friends who come to the show. And I have to say, I had such a good time with Vivica A. Fox yesterday. Yeah. When I tell you, oh my goodness. Vivica and I sat and talked like we were having a girls chat. It was just like being with your bestie. Aww. And Vivica, I love her so much. I've known Vivica for a long time in this business. And she was so open and forthcoming. You can ask Vivica anything, she will answer you. So I decided to ask her about her ex 50 cents. <laughs> But Vivica calls him by his first name, which is Curtis. And when I asked her, she did not hold back. Take a look. Y'all remember when, when 50 and, and, and Vivica was dating? Y'all were dating. 13 years ago. 13 years ago. Okay. And I remember it was some kind of award ceremony. You was on stage and you was you just, your body was popping. And, and I remember Curtis, like, he was in love with you, girl. Would you ever think about getting back together with Mr. Curtis Jackson if he came? And said, well, Ben and Jen did it again. Why not? I Let me tell you something. If you could see Vivica's eyes, you, she got the shakes on the couch. And, and you know, Vivica had that little, little tinkle in her eye. Like, I, you know, Vivica remembered that tingle. You know, you know that? <laughs> she remembered that tingle, that, 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 that like, uh, that, uh, you know that? You know, it's, it, there's the thing. You always know there's that one clap if you ever had that one that you know wasn't no good for you, but you just keep thinking about it. you had that when you think about it, you just got to just close your eyes because it was just, they don't leave your soul. And, and oh, it's just that one that every time you think about it, you know it ain't no good, but, it, you, but boy, you smile at the stuff, the shenanigans y'all got into. 
And I, rem I remember I had one guy like that. I just, it was that one that you just know you can't never go back to. You done weaned yourself. You done weaned them out of your spirit. You done put them over here. But every once in a while, they come back into mind. Every once in a while. And, and a lot of times doing stand up on the road, you know, once you get back from making the audience laugh, you're back in your hotel room, you're by yourself. That's when you buy yourself and you get, what's that sound? You get a little lonely sometimes. <laughs> And I remember sitting in my hotel room and I was like, I wonder what he doing. This, and that, as soon as that thought come into your head, that I wonder what he do. That's when you're supposed to run. That's when you're supposed to run. And I kept looking at my, I kept looking at that cell phone. I was looking at that cell phone. And I just, I don't know how it happened. I have no idea <laughs> how it happened. But all of a sudden I FaceTime and I was like, well, maybe he not gonna answer. And there was a face popped up and I went, ooh, just. <laughs> You know what they answer that phone and they're like, hello. And I was like, oh my gosh, I gotta run. If I don't run, I'm going straight to hell. I gotta run. <laughs> but I have to say, I, you know, looking at, oh, and y'all, I guess y'all wanna know what happened next. <laughs> Do tell. You can't, <laughs> you can't be leaving it. You know what? I said, I said, they, the, the angel came in and sat on my shoulder. I said, you know what? It's somebody at the door. I gotta call you back. And I hung up that phone. <laughs> Man. I'm telling you, when, when, it, it, when, it, when, it, when it be that good, I hung up that phone and I was sliding on it. I was just like, thank you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, it was one of those. It was one of those, oh my goodness. Man, oh man, but I just say, Vivica, I don't know, that little, that little, that little something in your eye that just sparked and I said, you may want to go back to the candy shop just for a little. <laughs> Oh man! Now y'all, I gotta. Uh, you, I'm, I'm rushing a little bit because as soon as this show is over, I have got to rush out of here because my baby is going to his prom tonight. And so, <laughs> oh my God! Uh, when I tell you, I, I am just like I don't even know how he came from. You know singing to me and nuzzling in my neck to like, he's taking somebody to the prom. And the, <laughs> and the school, um, now please don't make me cry because this is hard enough for me. Because he was like, don't be getting emotional. And I said, I'm not gonna get emotional. Then I had to run in the room and scream into my pillow. Uh, and we got his tux and the, the, the tie and, the, and Edie, my sister, showed me the corsage. And I was just like, oh my gosh, my baby. So uh, the school said that they had to, you know, he had to pick a song to, to, to dance to with his date. And so my son loves rap. He gonna pick this rap song. <laughs> the song got so many doggone, they got the P word, the B word, the F word. <laughs> I mean, I, and I said, Jeffrey, they can't play that song. They can't, they can't play that song for y'all to dance to. So he gonna look at me, he said, what about the song Pound Town? That's fire. <laughs> okay, and that's what I'm saying. Pound Town. If you don't know what Pound Town is, ask your daughter. <laughs> ask your daughter, because let me tell you, your mama not going to know what the song is. And I told him, I said, Jeffrey, you, you cannot pick a, a rap song. You got three choices. You can pick Lionel Richie, you can <laughs> pick Katy Perry, or you can pick any of them songs from the Little Mermaid soundtrack. That's... <laughs> oh, my gosh. This boy. So I'm just like, I gotta rush home and I gotta help him put on his tux and, and put the texturizer in his hair. <laughs> so excited. He don't know, you know, there's, there's a car taking him to the place and his car bringing him back. He don't know that I'm gonna help him take the girl home. Like, <laughs> I'm just had a driver's hat on and a little thing. I'll be like, hello, sir, get in the car. <laughs> But a sports anchor is being praised for stiff-arming an overzealous fan. Samantha Rivera was reporting on the Stanley Cup when she stopped a fan from interrupting her broadcast. Take a look. Samantha posted about the incident on her Instagram account saying, let this serve as a reminder to back the hell off when I'm working and a respect that I am doing my job. I love this because when I first saw this, I said, Samantha gotta be from Brooklyn or the Bronx. This girl right here. Do you know where she from? Cause she, this, I think she, is she from? 
Is she from? From Chicago, but she's working in Miami right now. She is from Chicago. Oh yeah, Chicago. I'm from Chicago. They breed you tough in Chicago. Samantha Rivera, you are my shero. I love this because Samantha literally was gonna fight that guy with one arm. She. And every time I see a reporter and they're just trying to do their job and people keep going back and forth in front of the camera or jumping in front of them, talking about, I love you, mama, I always feel like, let the reporter do their job. They're just trying to, you know, and she doesn't need any help. But I say, Samantha Rivera, you need to be reporting on the New York Giants. You, you are something special. Maybe you can teach classes on the side for new reporters, girl. And you know, and she's uh, reporting at a hockey game. You know those hockey fans get crazy. And I love Samantha, because she was like, if you, if you like what my right hand doing, let me show you what this left hand gonna do. She is, my, you know what, Samantha, Miami just does not deserve you. Come on back to New York. Come on over here to New York, Samantha. We like them tough in New York. Oh, man, I love it. Now, y'all, there's this new fashion trend. It's the exposed bra trend. That's what it's called. It's made to look like an intentional wardrobe malfunction. So now all of these celebrities are wearing it. They got Bella Hadid, uh, Euphoria star, Sydney Sweeney, Scarlett Johansson, Zoe Saldana. Um, clap if you like this exposed bra trend. Nobody likes it. You know. Well, I'm looking at it, and I just say, finally, Willie Sinclair III from the Milwaukee Sinclairs can stop pulling on my clothes so my bra <laughs> is not showing. Because I'm like, I'm looking at this going, OK, well, now, Willie is always pulling and pinning just so my bra won't show. But if these girls are doing it, they call this fashion. I don't, mm-mm. <laughs> but this literally, I, I, if I was on a, at an event with these women and I saw Scarlett Johansson, I would go up to her and I go, Scarlett, pull your dress up. Pull your dress up. What is you? I'd be like, girl, why are you wearing this white bra with this pink thing? Or if I didn't want nobody here, I'd be like, girl, your bra's out. You know your bra's out. Because all of them got their bras out. You know, back in the day, you couldn't wear your bra because they, they considered this trashy. Like if your bra strap was showing, it was considered trashy. But I'm here to let y'all know, I started this trend back in 2001. Like you. <laughs> 2001. I'm going, look, this, this, and it, all these fashions are nothing new. So all those people who was making those comments on, on the tabloids, like, nah, 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 I started it. But <laughs> I'm not doing it no more. Now, y'all, Access Hollywood's entertainment reporter, Emily Orozco, she was here the other day, and she talked about this trend, and it's called Barefoot Boy Summer, which is so gross because all of these celebrities are walking around with no shoes on their feet. And literally, I was looking at it, and I was like, this is so disgusting that y'all was walking around with no shoes on. It's so, I don't even want to say it's country. That's, now, that's trashy. But if you figure out what you're walking around in, the, like, it's so nasty. I was in Times Square with Jeffrey this weekend, and we were sidestepping poop. Um, you know, it was like stuff on the ground. It was all kinds of gum. It was cigarette butts. It's, it's stuff spilled from a cup. And when we got to the house, I made Jeffrey, and we took off our shoes, and we left them right outside at the door. Because there's so much stuff on the street. And y'all want to walk on the street and put your feet in it? And I, so I was, like, really disgusted until until Marco showed his pretty feet. I gotta give a shout out to Marco. Marco, I gotta say, Marco, you, you, good for you, cause you keep your feet so nice and clean. They were so pretty, <laughs> your toes. Did you like, were you, and they were nice and buff, were you like polishing your toes before you? Oh, that's just my feet. I don't know, I don't really show them too much, but you know. I think, I, I mean, I prefer to keep them in my J's, if that's okay with everybody else. Yeah, but they're so pretty. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was like, Marco got pretty feet. <laughs> you got pretty feet. <laughs> no. Anybody, Marco? Marco, no, he can't, now y'all gotta, he can't take his shoes off for everybody. He got, <laughs> I just say, anybody with feet that pretty, you gotta have good credit, Marco. <laughs> Now, Marco showed him one time, y'all. You got to start up an OnlyFoot account. Uh, what? You got Marco. I'm, I mean, I'm flattered, but I think I'll pass. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, y'all, I gotta ask you, have you ever made an impulsive buy and you later regretted it? Yeah. Because, yes, this is the case for Pete Davidson. So last year, Pete and his SNL co-star, Colin Jost, they put together their money and they bought a Staten Island ferry that was up for auction. <laughs> Okay, so when asked about buying the ferry, Pete responded, I have no idea what's going on with that thing. Me and Colin were very stoned and bought a ferry. <laughs> First of all, how much money are y'all making that you can be drunk and high and buy a ferry? That's a big, that is a big boat. Now, I mean, I could go and buy a ferry, but my credit card is gonna get declined if I put it down. I wanna know what kind of weed was y'all smoking? to get this dog on fit this big old orange fairy. Right there, that would make you be sober. Just that orange color right there. And they, were, and they said that they were planning on, once they had bought it, they were gonna turn it into a nightclub. Okay? They gonna... I, I don't know why y'all clapping. I have no idea why you clapping. I'm not going on no damn fur, the fairy to be dancing and dropping it like it's hot on this fairy. This fairy looks like it could sink at any moment. I look at Pete Davidson and I go, you don't know what to do with your money, Pete Davidson, you buying a ferry. If you trying to impress people, don't buy the Staten Island Ferry, buy a yacht. That is what will impress a woman. Do you understand if you showed up on your date in that big old Staten Island Ferry, wanting to wine and dine somebody, the thing looked like it don't even work. They put that... <laughs> These people, Colin and Pete, put down their credit cards, and as soon as they left, the Staten Island people was like, suck us! <laughs> With this one. Oh my gosh, I always get buyer's remorse, but it ain't nothing as big as a Staten Island dog on ferry. I mean, I wanted to return things. I wanted to return husbands, but not no dag on ferry. So I don't know if I'm on your side this way, Pete. Oh my gosh, what do we got next? Oh, don't go anywhere, y'all, because up next, Anthony Ramos is here. <laughs> You know what? It's a, I'm such a fan of yours and follow you on TikTok. Okay. And I saw on your TikTok, you like to do your TikToks in the shower. I just... Yeah. What's going on? Uh, sexy. Sexy. Uh, I never saw one with the, <laughs> yeah. with the brush and the teeth. Wow, she pulled it up. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's just called taking, that's, the, I, that, that's called, I should have been out of the shower 15 minutes ago, and I'm still showering. Uh, everything's clean already. At I like point, it, you but... clean, and you singing, and you love yeah. singing. Do I you like, do your I best like sing. singing in the shower? Uh, I think so. Good, <laughs> good acoustics. Yeah, what's your favorite, what's like, your, mine is like, we are family, Sister Sledge. What's your favorite shower song? I like singing Temptation songs in the shower. Oh, you like to do Temptations in the yeah, shower? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And then I saw also, you like to post your shirtless photos. And <gasps> you, you got all your shirtless photos. Uh, right? look, on... <laughs> look at this right here. Okay. Okay, so you were raised by, because I my son's 18, <laughs> I'm a single mom. You were raised by a single mom. I was. Like, what does she say about your, your little, the sex symbol status now? She, that is absolutely, she's never mentioned anything like that in the history of my life. <laughs> uh, she's like, uh -huh. put a shirt on, nobody cares. No, that's your mama. Yeah. I know if I was to call your mother now, she'd be like, I, you know, I'm proud of my yeah, son. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, this yeah. your mother right here. That's me and my mom, yeah. Oh, my Christmas. gosh. You know, I know she is so proud of you and just your journey and your evolution. I watch, and I had to have to say this, I love Transformers Rise of the Beast so Thank much. You. Thank you. It is a prequel to the Transformers series. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, Transformers Rise of the Beast, Rise of the Beast is set in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, yes. You know, yes. we got me and Dominique Fish back, you know, the fellow New Yorker, Brooklyn Knight. She's from East New York. I'm from Bushwick. Yes. And, um, you know, they, they meet and they go on this journey with the Autobots and we travel to Peru and, uh, and realize that we all, you know, we meet the Maximals for the first time in the entire franchise. So a lot of new characters. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously it's to, you know, we, we all unite, right? Yeah. Uh, and to save the world. 
This, this is what I tell you about Transformers. When I was watching this with my, with my uh, son, Jeffrey, I love it that you tapped into the culture, which has never been done in Transformers, yeah. that literally we were, when watching you, it was like watching me. It was like you, you and Dominique were so good in this. And there's also the little boy, his name is Dean Scott. That's Dominique uh, Fishback. Yeah. Uh, Y'all were wonderful at, at, as far as like being in the culture. It was so wonderful. And then the little boy who played your little brother, uh, his name is Dean. Yeah, Dean, Dean Vasquez. Dean Vasquez. Yeah. It was so special. wonderful, your relationship. It was so special, and it even had me tearing up. I loved it so much. Yeah, he's a, he's a special kid, man. I mean, like, you know, uh, he's, he's always super encouraging, too. Like, he'll send me messages, random texts, like, yeah. Anthony, just don't forget who you are, man. You know, the world needs you. Like, yo, like, he's like 12 or 13. I'm like, yo, Dean, who are you, bro? Get out of here. <laughs> He was, please tell him for me, he was so daggone good. I will. Now, li watching Transformers, your scenes were with robots. Yeah. Like, so did you have to tap into your inner child to, to make this work, your imagination? Yeah, it's all about using your imagination. Ain't nothing there. You're just talking to nobody. <laughs> like, they, they come in with a tennis ball and, and on a stick, and they like rehearse twice, and you do the whole scene, and it's a mad emotional, and then they like, yo, you got it? And I'm like, I think, maybe, I guess. <laughs> They take it out and they're like, all right, cool, because you know they got to pay money to paint it out. I so. mean, I did not get it all that I got it. I hope I I completely got your emotional, like the register. You're being funny. I was so into this when things happened. I did not know you was looking at a tennis ball. Uh, yeah, no, 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 looking at nothing. Oh my god. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. Okay, then so that crazy. is a testament. You are so good. Thank you. Thank really you. good. Now, when you were doing, there was a lot of, there was just a lot of uh, action scenes in the movie. Yeah. Did you have any close calls in? the movie? Oh, 100%. Yo, my costume, I was wearing this windbreaker. We, there's this crazy fight scene at a museum, and they, everybody's blasting each other. And, and me and Dom are trying to take cover, and one of the fireworks got caught in my costume. Oh, my gosh, really? Yo, I didn't even realize it. Like, I'm over here, so I'm over here, you know, trying to take cover. And I was like, yo, there's a hole in my windbreaker. <laughs> and then I watched playback, and I saw that the firework went and just stayed there for a second. Really? And, uh, but thankfully, we, I'm here to tell you the tale. <laughs> <laughs> that could have went left. Okay, <laughs> very left. Yeah. So, did they keep that scene in the movie? They kept it. They kept it in the well, movie. Th they used that take, but they cut the take before you could see the firework. Oh, that, the part where you look down like, yo, there's a hole in my yo, windbreaker. there's a hole in my windbreaker. <laughs> a whole hole. This is not only the, the, you know, I loved you in Transformers, but also I loved you in In the Heights. In the Heights. <laughs> You. you were so good. You had me jamming to all the music when I was watching you, and you filmed it in New York's Washington Heights. Yeah. So I, I heard that a funny thing happened to you while you were filming. Oh yeah, we we did a we had this like pretty emotional scene, and like my grandmother dies, and I'm right. over here like we're all singing to her like Alawansa, God take her spirit, please, Lord. And, uh, and everybody's outside of this apartment with candles, we're all singing on this block. Yeah. And all of a sudden, our director calls cut, and this guy yells from his window, this better be the last take! <laughs> <laughs> For like, multiple times, this better be the last take. Only in New York. Yeah, only in New York. <laughs> <laughs> we're just like, yo, bro, we gonna be out here all night. I don't know if this is you, Papa. Like, <laughs> you're beat, bro. <laughs> You know what I mean? If you'd have done that in LA or in Hollywood, everybody would just been have been watching, no problem yeah, at all. Maybe, yeah. You not not this guy. <laughs> not this guy. And you were able to get back into your emotional scene after that. After I got the good laugh out, yeah, sure. <laughs> I was like, all right, you know, let's. She's dead. Remember, she's dead. Oh she's my right, gosh. Yeah. Sorry, that's mad. Bo yeah. Anyway. No, we I don't got want to get it. dark on Sherry. <laughs> I think that is so incredibly funny. Now, we have uh, loved you in the Heights, Transformers, many things that you've done, but Hamilton. Yeah. Hamilton, Hamilton, yeah. Hamilton. Yeah. Absolutely amazing at that. And you said that Hamilton came at the perfect time. Uh, in my life, I mean, yeah. Um, I got fired from a job, <laughs> actually. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was doing a show at Radio City Music Hall. Um, that was like the equivalent of the Christmas Spectacular. Right. So like they had, you know, with the Rockettes, they were gonna do it in the spring. They asked me to be a singer in that show. 
And I was like, amazing, great, I could pay my rent, we in the mix. And uh -huh. then, uh, but I, I go to rehearsal one day, I was auditioning for Hamilton on the low though. Okay. You know, cause they, they very like, there was this 16 shows a week at Radio City. Right. So it was basically like, yo, you, gotta be you, ain't got, yeah, you got no time to do anything else. But, but long story short, I, I, I go to work one day and after my last audition for Hamilton, I go to work and we get, there's like a, a, a announcement on the board. It's basically just like, yo, everybody don't sign in, just come up to the large rehearsal hall. And everybody's like, and, and they're like, yeah, you, you all, all you guys are laid off, thanks for coming. Oh, and uh, yeah. yo, it was wild. But then like a few hours later, I got a call from uh, the casting company that was doing Hamilton. They're like, yo, so we heard you got fired, my G, so pull up. And you yeah. got Hamilton. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Because I guess I can say the Christmas Spectacular would not have changed your life. No. But Hamilton. Yeah, yeah. We got a nickname for that show, too. It's, it's called Broken Hearts and Shattered Lights. It's called Heart and Lights. <laughs> it's supposed to be called Heart and Lights, but... Uh, oh, my God. Yeah. And Hamilton just, like... And then the doors just open after Hamilton. Yeah, yeah. I met Spike Lee, and I did She's Gotta Have It, and I started doing music. I got my new song out, Villano. Villano. It's out right now. Um, um, yeah, and, and I started doing movies, you know, started doing movies wow. after that and stuff like that. It's know? amazing, like the one door closes and you have to know that another door will open. Yeah, you just gotta have faith, man. You just gotta, you know, just um, keep going and, and have faith, yeah. Absolutely. And uh, for Viano, this, this is a single that you just released. This is yeah. on your album, because you won a Grammy, you won a Grammy for Hamilton, for the Hamilton, soundtrack. Yeah. But now you got your own single, Viano, was it a personal connection to Viano? Yeah, for sure. You know, I went through uh, I went through a pretty pretty wild situation a couple of years ago, and mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I was writing songs about it right after, yeah. but I, I, I kind of held out, and I think finally um, I'm ready to let you know let that story out and kind of turn the page from that chapter. But before yeah. I do, you know, just kind of let it out, you know, uh, in this way. So I'm really excited. You know, uh, it's uh, it's a song about being kind of pinned as a villain. Mm. Um, uh, but uh, but then kind of, you know, but you knowing on the inside you're not, you know, and, and just kind of just letting that go and, and releasing it to the world. So I'm excited, you know, go check it out, man. I, I'm, I'm really excited about these next few songs. This is about, I'm going crazy on these tracks. I'm not All right. Lie. Well, we can't wait to listen to Viano and the songs, but I have to say, keep doing things like Transformers and including us in, in everything you're doing because yeah. I felt seen when I saw you. Uh, so thank you so much. I appreciate that, man. That means man, a lot. Thank you so much for being here, Anthony. Transformers Rise of the Beast is in theaters today. You gotta see it. Yeah. So good. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. It's time for what I wanted versus what I got. So our first one comes from Derek in Atlanta. Derek needed a fun shirt for a party he was going to. Here's the shirt Derek wanted. All right, this is good. Here's the shirt Derek got. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> That shirt definitely says party all over it. At least the park that's covering your body. Oh my goodness. So our next one comes from Valerie in Dionysus in San Antonio. They ordered roses to cheer up their mama. So here are the roses that they wanted. Oh, cute. All right. Here's what they got. Oh! oh my God. Forget cheering up the mom. Somebody needs to cheer up those roses. This is terrible. Okay, y'all, our next one comes from Jamie in North Carolina. So Jamie wanted a blank cake with nothing on it. Here's the cake Jamie wanted. Love it, nothing on there. Okay, here's the cake Jamie got. <laughs> Why they do you like that, Jamie? But there you go, you got your cake with nothing on it, literally. <laughs> So our last one comes from Keisha in Maryland. Now, Keisha wanted a 70s Afro for her 50th birthday. Here's the wig that Keisha wanted. Okay, very, I like it. Here's the wig that Keisha got. <laughs> I know that 70s song 
is called staying alive, but that wig looks like an animal that's having trouble staying alive on the top of your head, girl. Oh, my God. <laughs> if you have a funny fail that you'd like to share, go to SherryShowTV.com. And up next, Regina DeChico joins me in Live Lounge. Keep it here. We'll be right back. <laughs> My next guest makes people laugh every day as a warm-up comedian for The View. Now, last time I saw her, I said to her, one day we were gonna work together, and that day is today. Please, please welcome Regina DeChico to my house. I gotta tell you, Regina, yes. I'm so glad you're here because I knew it and I kept saying it. It was gonna happen. Yes. And I'm so glad it happened because I love you so much. Oh man, I love you. Sherry keeps a promise, everybody. Sherry keeps a promise. Girl. Because here we are. Here we are. Here we are. And it's so funny because when, when we first met, I noticed you got a deep voice. <laughs> oh, me and Sherry? Did you? Um, it's funny because people like to be so coy about it. They're like, oh my God, you have such a distinct voice. Um, and I, Sherry, that is code for like, it sounds like your voice fell down the stairs. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, get, I am well aware. I have a three-year-old niece, and she calls me Uncle Gina. <laughs> Uncle <laughs> Gina, Sherry! <laughs> And she knows, the, she knows the difference because I have heard her say Aunt Suzanne. She, <laughs> no, but she's making a choice, a choice that I will remember at Christmas, okay? <laughs> yes, yes! It's, it's, but there's a, there's a new baby in town, Sherry, okay. a new baby. Oh my God, little baby, not even a year old. This baby cannot speak. And if you are near the baby and you say Aunt Regina, she just goes, <laughs> be mad, but I'm impressed. You know what I mean? I'm like, you you do not even need your words. That is a sick burn, baby. Right? But when people hear your voice, do they do crazy things when they hear your voice? Yes, well, people think they hear different things. So I was doing a show at a college, and this group of girls started laughing, but like independently of the show. You know when you could tell, oh, you're not laughing at me, there's something else. Yes. So they said like, oh, you sound like someone, but we can't tell you who. Okay. And I said, yeah, exactly. I was like, no, no, you have to tell me. And they said, you sound like the slug lady from Monsters, Inc. <laughs> I'm watching you, Wazowski. <laughs> Always watching you. Right, it's crazy, it's crazy. So I said, I have to Google and see what other voices that woman does. Yes. But it is a dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's a man's voice, Sherry. That is a man's voice. You know I can't know with you. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you go out, like, have you ever had a strange encounter with any fans? Yeah, so, like, <laughs> one time this woman came over and she was like, oh, my God, great show, you were so funny. And I was like, thank you. Uh -huh. um, and she said, oh, my friend wants to talk to you. And I said, of course, anything for a fan. And she yeah. was like, oh, well, my friend is a speech pathologist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. And she thinks you have polyps. <laughs> right? like, yeah. She did, no, she did. So I run into this woman in the bathroom, yeah. right? And she asked me to do vocal exercises. Yeah. And I do them because I will do anything for another Instagram okay. follower, <laughs> Sherry, okay? <laughs> anything. Oh, um, so I'm, do, I'm talking and then finally she's like, well, does it hurt when you talk? Oh, right. And I said, well, it doesn't hurt me when I talk. <laughs> but I feel like it hurts you when I talk. <laughs> like, Back. But you know, because I actually love your deep voice, but did you, did you have this as a kid? Yes, yeah. yes, I did. I have always sounded this way, but the thing is like, people think there's a mystery to how this happened. Everyone's like, oh, you must smoke, like you smoke, you're a smoker. Yeah. And I'm like, well, no, like at what point would I have had to start smoking to be at this stage now, right? <laughs> like, well, I'm sorry, was I on the playground? <laughs> like, is this line for the slide ever gonna move? <laughs> Is it me or does recess get shorter <laughs> every year? Right? Like, no! No, but I did, but I did sound like that on the playground, right? Yeah, I did. You did. So there was some stuff that was impossible for me to do. Like, it was impossible for me to call my friends growing up. Yeah. Or like, can Stephanie sleep over? <laughs> <laughs> Who is this? Regina from class. <laughs> like, 
you sick pervert. <laughs> Tell Steph to pack up her PJs and meet me on the playground. <laughs> and, like, it's not, not, but it's every, that's all my childhood memories, right? Like, I'm a brownie, it's like a baby Girl Scout. You want Thin Mints or what? Like, like just tear, just bad, just bad. Regina, stop, girl, I can't. Oh my gosh. So you, I love this. You have been married nine, almost nine yes, years. Yes, yes, Oh, that's so okay. great. Uh, How's it going? It's going, Sherry. It's, it's, uh, no, it's good. It's good, but it is, marriage is not the Cinderella story I was promised. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like everyone makes it sound like it's gonna be this whole thing that it's not. Like, I mean, I was at a show and my husband was in the audience. Uh -huh. So I got off stage and the server came over to me and she said, the gentleman over there sent you this, right? I'm like, oh my God, what did my husband send? Uh -huh. But like champagne, chocolate covered strawberries. <laughs> no, my husband sent me his leftover tater tots. <laughs> <laughs> Cold to the touch. Hard cheese, leftover tater tots, right? And somebody in the audience like raised their hand. They were like, oh, well, did you eat the tater tots? <laughs> and I felt like Jack Nicholson, a few good men. I was like, you're damn right I did. <laughs> because they're just, they're cold to the touch. Hey, they're cold, oh they're cold to the touch. But I do feel like marriage sort of, it spirals out. And it's not, I can't put this all on my husband, everybody. It's a yes. little, it's a little me too, Shay. And I feel like we are close. Yes, we, can we share. are. We are close, right? Yes, we can share. Yes. I can tell you things took a turn, Sherry. Um, when I, when I let one rip in front of my, my now husband. I did, I did. Oh my and you, God. Know, I'm far. you know what I'm talking about, You know what I'm talking about, Sherry. You know what I'm talking about. So what had happened was, let me paint the scene, everybody. <laughs> it was, it was Thanksgiving, oh. right? Uh -huh. So I bent over to take a look in the oven. Like my husband's making the turkey, he wants me to look, right? So I yes. just bend over to take a look in the oven, right? And that tiniest little toot just slipped right out, <laughs> right? And he was like, oh my God, that is the cutest thing I've ever heard. What? And I said, if you think that's cute, wait until I try to digest milk, right? Because that's... <laughs> That's where we are. There's no going back now. <laughs> There's no going back now. Regina, you cracked me up and I knew you would. Oh my gosh, yeah. Thank you so much for being oh here. My oh my gosh. Y'all, Regina will be performing at City Winery on June 16th. Get your tickets and at Gotham Comedy Club on June 21st. We'll be right back. <laughs> We'll be right back. Have a real good time live. If you want to be legendary right here on Sherry, join my studio audience. Get free tickets now at SherryShowTV.com. Let's play Sherry Showdown. Now, I am here with Danielle from Florida. Woo! All right, so Danielle. Yeah. Here is your question. Michael Yuri and I both went to a concert where we think he got away from this superstar. Was it Taylor Swift, Beyonce, or Janet Jackson? Mm. It's gotta be seen, Miss Janet. Janet Jackson, there you go, Mom. Thank you so much. He's over here, thank you. Now we got Ron from Chicago. All right, so Ron, here it is. Terry Crews stopped by last week and taught me how to do what? Perform his infamous dance moves, tackle like an NFL pro, or sing A Thousand Miles by Vanessa Carlton? C. C, sing it. Oh, no, we did the NFL tackle. I'm sorry, Ron. Come on over here, Pandy from San Antonio. So, Pandy, here's your question. All right, my friend Tammy Townsend, had, Tammy Townsend had a wardrobe malfunction at the NAACP Image Awards, and she used what handy item as a quick fix? Was it Gorilla Glue? a nail gun, or masking tape? Masking tape. There you go, you are absolutely right. Next is Delisha from Guyana. Yeah. So beautiful Delisha, Raven Simone revealed that she would give everyone she dated an NDA to sign right before what? Naughty time, proposing, or the first date? Naughty time. That's right, Miss Guyana, naughty time. Here we go with Tamika from Brooklyn. So, Tamika, here's your question. Everyone is buzzing about this controversial fashion trend for men going out barefoot, braiding their beards, or dyeing their eyebrows. A. A, going out barefoot. You are right. Come on in, you guys. Thank you all for playing, and you are all getting a $100 gift card to Skin & Co. We'll be right back. Be right back. It's time for one last laugh. 
So today's laugh comes from Italy, where a dog took her owner on a relentless chase through a store. <laughs> Take a look. No, Gina. No, no, Gina. E Gina. Dai, che si clienti. Gina. Gina, dammi il giocattolo. Gina. Gina. Dammi Gina. Gina, ti deve pagare. E non è tua. Gina. Gina, ferma. Ferma, Gina. Ferma. That dog looks like me chasing after men with no kids and good credit. Gino, Gino, Gino. Thanks for the laugh and we'll be right back. <laughs> Sherry, we'll be right back. I hope something on today's show put a smile on your face. On Monday, Damon Wayans and Pam Greer will be here. Until then, be intentional about having a good time. Bye-bye! <laughs> Nice.